Hey guys, just gonna welcome back to another Sam Bolivi video. In this video, I'm gonna be trying to fix this PSP Go. So, I paid £40 for this off eBay, which is a pretty good price. Um, broken, they usually sell for about £60, and then working, they go from anywhere from 80 to about 120, 110. Uh, this one is in pretty nice condition with the exception of the sort of grip bits on the back they're quite yellowed but the screen isn't too scratched and just overall it didn't look like it's been used that much now it doesn't work you can see there's no image on the screen and if i turn the sound up there's no sound but the screen is not broken. I really don't know how well you'll be able to see this because the room I'm in is quite bright, but if I take a torch and put it on the screen, can you see that there's actually stuff on the screen? Basically, this has got a backlight issue. Now, the guy before me did replace the ribbon cable because he thought that was the problem but they didn't fix it. So I bought it for 40 pound and I believe after a bit of research, it's gonna be a fuse problem. So let's start disassembling this. Now, if it is a fuse problem, I have got a PSP 2003 motherboard here that I will sort of steal the fuses off and replace them in this. I'm guessing that since they're both powering a well a similar side backlight the fuse will be the same um, if not I don't know what I'll do but I guess we will take it apart and see now I know I've looked up where the three fuses are for the backlight one of them is very easy to get to one of them you've got to remove sort of a metal shield to get to and the other one, you also have to remove a metal shield, but it's sort of, it's very awkward to get to. Um, but let's open this up. Now, I've never taken apart a PSP Go before, so I'll probably do something wrong, but let's see. Ah, there you go. So, yeah, someone has definitely been in this before me. I mean, well, I obviously already knew that, but warranty sticker. Uh, it has been cut let's undo the battery just so we don't sort of short anything out there you go does this just come out yes it does okay so we can see the ribbon cable sort of sliding there now the fuse that I'm looking for is there that's the easiest one to get to and it's absolutely tiny but let me grab my multi and set it to continuity so when these two points touch it beeps and you're probably i will lower my camera just so maybe you can see it a little bit better that's the fuse just there and that's my finger next to it so you've got an idea of how small it is and let's see, is it blown? And it is, okay, that's that's actually good. Usually a blown fuse would be bad, but in this case, that's very good because that might very well be our fault and hopefully our only fault. Um, I would hope if one fuse has blown that the others haven't blown as well because that's obviously the whole point of a fuse uh, it stops the other components being damaged but i guess i will replace that now it's going to be very awkward to get to i think uh, just because of how close it is to the other components and it almost looks as if there's a little bit of water damage on this sort of ceramic capacity can you see that i don't know um i'm gonna first replace this fuse and then we'll see if we've made any progress 
Now this is for the backlight and after a little bit of research I have discovered that the sort of backlight uh, not turning on and no sound is a common fault to happen together. Um, I mean I'll obviously inspect the headphone jack and see what that's like. If I can figure out how to get the ribbon cable out. I'll probably have to look that up because uh, the last thing I want to do is damage more bits but anyway let's first replace this fuse. go that is the fuse removed off the PSP 2003 now I'm debating if I need to take the motherboard out of the shell because I don't want to damage anything but equally Will it be easier just to sort of do it without taking the motherboard out? I don't know. Um, I'll give it a shot, but I'll keep an eye on every other sort of part and make sure it isn't going to damage anything else. But, yeah, let's, let's see. Hopefully it will just be this one fuse. Now, ideally what you would have for this is a hot air station. It's not easy at all to do this with a soldering iron. Uh, the method I use is just sort of heat up one end and twist it ever so slightly, flip it around, heat up the other end, twist it slightly, and I keep doing that until it eventually comes off. Now, the fuses, when they get hot, go very fragile, so it's very easy to sort of break them, but it's the, the best I can do at this point in time because I don't have a hot air station. And I don't plan on getting one for quite a while, but anyway, let's replace this fuse. Okay, I'm not going to lie, it really isn't the neatest, but bearing in mind the scale that I'm working at, it's not too bad. I mean, the fuse is at, up at an angle because I couldn't get my soldering iron in that sort of little gap between the sort of ceramic Thing and the fuse so I've just soldered the fuse to the side of the uh, ceramic thing I can't remember what it's called but it's connected to where it needs to be it should work now the fuse is not blown and just to double check my multimeter there you go hopefully you heard that so let's connect our battery and let's see if it's if there's a backlight now and or if we have sound if one of them is fixed I'll be happy and then I'll probably move on to the next fuse if neither of them work then I will probably still be quite disappointed let's just pop the back casing on and clip that in place like that let's see got a power light which is good oh okay well that was definitely sound that's something there's no image okay let's get the torch again and let's just see okay can you see that hopefully you can it's really blurry there is definitely stuff on the screen so it is still working but I mean we've made some progress definitely not the best sort of progress but we do now have sound so I'm gonna disassemble this again and I'm gonna check the other fuses now I'm not gonna show you how to do that I'll do it in a time-lapse because I don't know how to do it myself 
and I don't want to give out sort of the wrong information and make someone sort of break their PSP. If I damage this, uh, then it's my fault. But if I instruct someone else and they damage it because I've said something wrong, then that's my fault as well. But anyway, I'll get this further disassembled and we'll see where the other fuses are and if that blows. So I've removed this shield uh, just from here and just there, the end of my tweezers, is the other fuse that is related to the backlight. Now let's see if it's blown. Okay, it's not. No, that's working and the other fuse I believe is under this one. Well, that is the fuse all the way there. And I've got no idea how I'm gonna test that. Um, is one side of a fuse always grounded? I believe it is. Um, no, okay. I don't fully know. What I'm doing. Let's just try. No, okay, I'm just hitting them outside of the metal shield. I fear that I may have to desolder that. So, to do that, I am going to have to disassemble the entire PSP. Once again, it's not the neatest. Uh, I have ha unfortunately had to cut sort of the metal shielding uh, and just bend it back so I could get to the fuse. But you know, hopefully, once I've uh, reassembled this, uh, I'll be able to bend the metal back into place, or I may just cut that chunk out completely. And when I put this metal cap back on, it will cover all that up. Now, the fuse is actually blown which is a good thing for me uh, because that means we have found what will hopefully be the final fault with this. But unfortunately, it's just in such an awkward place that it's gonna be unbelievably difficult to sort of try and replace. Now, I'm slightly reluctant to sort of just bridge the fuse because that really isn't the best but I unfortunately I think I'm gonna have to do that because there's just no way that my soldering iron's getting sort of far enough down there to get both sides of the uh, fuse I mean you can see just how tight the space is and how much of a mess I've made of this but anyway Unfortunately, I think I'm just going to have to bridge the fuse. Nowhere near safe, uh, but unfortunately, there's just nothing else I can do. Well, a bit of the metal sort of um, shielding broke away, but it is indeed back together. I think it's back together well enough that it will still do its purpose. I mean, I don't know what that purpose is, but... <laughs> It does something, probably, but the metal is not shorting anywhere. So, let's reassemble this. And there you go. That is the PSP fixed. Okay. Well, 
hopefully there's games on it. Um, okay, now that's save data. Oh. Well, okay. Well, it looks as if someone's modded this. Got Rin GB slash Game Boy Color emulator. Oh. Okay. Well, this is starting up. Is it going to load? Ah, oh, no game loaded. Okay. Well, let's switch this off. There you go. I'm going to put all these screws back in it. And on my laptop, I have got a few Game Boy Advance game ROMs that I will copy over to this because I have a charger, I've got a USB charger for this as well. So I can plug it into my laptop. I will drag and drop some ROMs onto this. And let's see if it loads. Um, I don't know, there's no memory card in this. That's my only concern that it may need a memory card, but oh well. My original plan is to mod this uh just sort of get like a psp emulate or not emulator just sort of load psp roms onto this so then i can just download whatever game i want and play it sort of whenever on the go is it going to turn on again yay um i guess there's a bit of a mark on the screen kind of annoying can you see slightly darker mark at the top but nothing I can do about that because I'm not replacing the screen in this but anyway let me go grab my laptop I'm not going to show you oh it's doing something happy new year oh it thinks it's the first oh <laughs> okay well that's cool whoa Okay, we've got a calendar. Well, the shoulder buttons work. That's cool. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. I'm going to go grab my laptop and I'll put a ROM on this. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it may very well be considered piracy. But I'm not going to show you how to do that. I don't condone pirating PSP games or Nintendo games, but I'm going to do it anyway. Well, it's about an hour later. Um, the software that was on this, uh, as hard as I tried, I just couldn't get it to work, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, I believe that there must have been a memory card in this at some point, which for some reason has been removed at some point, And I think that must have had some of the sort of data for the games on it uh, because they just wouldn't work. It was weird, I plugged it into my laptop and it said that the game files were on there. There were loads and loads of Game Boy Advance game ROMs, but they just wouldn't show up. But anyway, uh, I wiped it, I started from scratch and I have modded it myself. Um, now, this has got Infinity 2 and Pro PS firmware. I don't know if that means anything, I just know that this is one of the easier sort of mods to do and then you can just put your uh, PSP ROMs on here. Uh, I've only got, what, one, two, three, four, five games on it at the moment because this is a 14 gig model, I believe. I may be wrong, uh, it doesn't say anywhere on the back, but I think it, I remember seeing 14 gig somewhere. Uh, it hasn't got a memory card in it and I haven't done a mod to sort of upgrade and expand the memory. Maybe I'll do that at some point. I guess I'll see how much I like it and if it's worth me putting the extra money into it. But as you can see, the games that I have loaded on here work really well. If you, it does take a minute to load, but that's the only, that's the only bad thing. 
uh, but that's kind of expected with a modded console but I really like it I've played a few games on it and I'm actually quite a big fan of this um, let's quickly create a new profile just so I can show you some gameplay um, the I've also played a little bit of Vice City on this it's very nice um, there you go hang on give it a second it's just gonna save there you go and now we can go into a game Burnout Legends is definitely one of my favorite games for the PSP let me lower this actually so in, so I'm not having to lift my arms um, I can just hold it hold it at a height that feels right but anyway yeah it it feels really nice I'm quite surprised that I have never sort of tried a PSP go before I mean I quite like my PSP I've got a PSP 1000 a PSP 2004 or 3 um, and and now this PSP go uh, it's really nice I really do like it um, and it's definitely going to be something that I'll take around with me when I when I go out or on a long journey somewhere uh, because it literally just compacts down to half the size and then whenever I want to use it I can just pull it out my pocket unfold it and start going so yeah it's going to be quite good and I reckon I'll use it quite a bit which is also why modding it benefits me although I suppose that modding's the only thing you can do with these if they're digital and they've turned off the sort of PSP Go servers for the PlayStation Store but yeah that's going to be it for this video um, everything seems to be working on it now the shoulder buttons work time works um, like when I turn it off fully and turn it back on it's got the correct time which clearly means the battery in this um, well that's assuming that it doesn't use the console battery uh, is good in this and yeah I'm quite happy with it the only thing I'm not happy with is these sort of grip bits on the back they're very yellow and they look they look dirty um, but I know I know they're not it's weird the if I polish the back of it quickly you'll see that the PSP itself is actually in quite nice condition can you see it's it's hardly hardly scratched on the back the screen yeah you won't be able to tell but the screen isn't scratched that much and just the body of the console there you go you can see that there no scratches whatsoever and the buttons like the button controls here isn't that scratched I mean there's a slight mark in the middle but I think that's just from where the screen slides but it's really nice um, I actually looked at the other stuff that the guy was selling and he is selling a empty PSP go pearl white box and the serial number on it matches as well so I'm pretty sure the guy bought it tried to fix it himself couldn't and then just parted the two up in a hope to sort of recoup some of the money but yeah I don't know if I should buy the box he wants like 40 pound for it and to be completely honest with you this isn't going to be something that I display but this is actually going to be something that I will keep and I will use on quite a regular basis and I don't really want it to be tied to a box if that makes sense because then I'll almost be not afraid to use it but I'll be a lot more cautious when I use it I mean I'm not going to go sort of throwing it across a room when I'm done using it but I want this to be something that I can just put in my pocket take out wherever have a like a game on it quickly and then put it away put it back in my pocket and 
so on and I don't want it to have a box because then I'll be like oh if I damage the console it also ruins the box it a bit as well uh, because they'll be matching serial numbers kind of annoying I I I just feel like 40 pound for a box when I know I'm not really going to use it is a bit too much but anyway that's going to be it for this video I really do hope you guys have enjoyed I obviously didn't show you mod in this because it is a bit of a grey area um, probably not best to pirate games but modding it there's nothing wrong with modding it obviously loading the games on may may be considered piracy i don't know but yeah um let me know if if i do upgrade the memory on this would you want me to show you guys doing that mod um it's a pretty complicated mod from what i understand but yeah let me know so thank you guys for watching comment like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one bye